Hey guys, Chris here from ASM Scholarships. There is a reason why I'm next to the Stanford logo right now, and that's because many of you guys ask us how to qualify to Stanford. It's probably the most, uh, most school we get asked about the most from you guys about how to, how to get in, what do I need? So I'm gonna tell you what you need academically and sporting wise to give you some really good information here today. Stanford is probably one of the most successful schools when it comes to sports, business, and politics. If you think about the, the level of people they produce from sports-wise, Tiger Woods, one of the most iconic golfers of all time, he went to Stanford. And you think in the business world, the Google founders both went there. And then also in politics in the US, Condoleezza Rice also went to Stanford. Plus the many, many, many other athletes that have been there over the years. Uh, it's one of the most impressive schools, definitely for that. So what do you need academically? Because that's the first thing before before you can even you know, contemplate going to Stanford is you are gonna to have to have the academic requirements to qualify. And then we're gonna talk about the sport level, what you need for the sport. So let's get straight into it and give you some useful tips. All right, so what I've done is I pulled up uh, some information from Stanford's website. There's gonna be two things that are gonna be really important when trying to get to Stanford. One thing's gonna be academics, and the second is gonna be the sport requirements. So here, I'm just gonna to explain to you the academic checklist on Stanford's website. So actually, if you go to Stanford, admissions.stafford.edu, they'll give you the checklist, they'll give you the application essays, standardized testing, they'll give you all the information here of what they look for, right? And here's kind of their checklist. So if you're trying to get into Stanford, they're gonna obviously make you do the application fee. You don't wanna do this though until you kind of got all this stuff done prior. So you're gonna to have to have the SAT grade, ACT, we're gonna to explain to you roughly what you need for that. Uh, a recommendation letter, so obviously someone from your school or someone that's got credibility that will really, really help. If you're on our program, we can, we'll help you do that part because obviously we're gonna be recommending you from us. Uh, we've also got a couple of students in Stanford right now, so that's a big tick as well. Official transcripts, so what these are, uh, are your grades from your current school. So they're gonna to have to look at what you've done in school um, at the moment academically, and you really wanna be aiming for top grades here, like at least A's, and A's or A stars. Any letter recommendations from any teachers you have, and then also you need to have your mid-year transcripts as well. So that's kind of like the halfway between uh, when you're finishing your school. We also have some additional information here, how to apply, what to do. And then what I wanna show you is this one. So what are the SAT requirements? So typically you have to get about a 1440 to 1560 on the SAT. And then it tells you as well, roughly what we're looking for point scoring wise. So reading, math, you know, it's not it's not all well and good to get top grades here, lower here, they wanna see some consistency. So that score will give you 1440, the minimum requirement that they're looking for uh, to get in. Now they also have here, if you're doing the um, SATs, they have the composite, the 75th. That's if you're going for like the higher range grades. So obviously this is more ideal. Um, but definitely gives you an idea of what you're looking for SAT wise to, to get in. So that helps you with the SATs. Let's talk about the sports. Okay, so sporting wise to get into Stanford in any kind of sport you're playing, you need to be at the top, the top of the top of your sport level. So ideally you need to be playing in international events or if you're in America playing across the whole of the States uh, at the highest level. So ideally you're playing for the country, you represent the country at a youth level, or you're playing for a team that's one of the best teams in the world or country wherever you're from. So for example, let's take golf, that's a sport I know very, very well. You definitely have to have a WAGA rating, um, and ideally you should be at least top top 500 minimum, ideally top 200 uh, WAGA rating. That's really gonna excel your chances of getting in to a school like Stanford. And obviously if you have a WAGA rating, you have many events that are credible uh, and well-respected around the world. Other sports like tennis, your UTR rankings are gonna be hugely crucial. Your soccer, for your soccer athletes out there, you got it, You have to be coming from like a youth academy. So if you're coming from like a Chelsea, a Monaco, PSG, if you're coming from their youth academies at those top schools, that's gonna be really, really exciting as well for a college coach. And obviously if you're playing like, you know, for the country youth level, again, awesome stuff. Now, if you're playing sports like American football, basketball, baseball, these American sports are typically uh, the best of the best athletes are in the States. You definitely wanna be playing for a, a team that's always in the top 10 of every district league they play in and ideally competing for nationals. So again, uh, I mean, a quick recipe for success here is make sure every year you're getting wins. You're getting big wins big recognition because that type of school like Stanford wants to see top grades along with top sporting results. That's how you qualify. 
Now, what if you don't have that, right? It's all well and good if you do, but many of you like myself back then doing this process didn't have all those kind of sport grades you needed or statistics you would like to have. Well, you gotta get reality check here. It's not gonna happen. So the only way you could go from say being an 18 year old into Stanford without having all the grades and the necessary sport results is going to an NJCAA school, a junior college, or you can go to a California junior college, which is called the Triple CAA. Now, the advantage of that is you can go there for one to two years, you can improve your uh, GPA, and you can also get your results here in America against athletes uh, all across the world, including the States. And if you get the best of the best results, you're making nationals with your junior college team and, and getting results that are really, really impressive, then schools like Stanford and others will take a look at you and that's another way to get into the program. You can also do a division two and a division one. You could do a transfer, um, but a lot of students like to do junior college first because you have to transfer. And that's why these big D1s do look at programs like that for transferring. So that's another tip if you don't have it right now. Or if you're really, really young watching this, like you're 14, 15, you've got time to go get those results. You've got time to work on your academics and you've got time to get your sport results up to where you need them to be to get into Stanford. So I hope that helps. I hope it gives you an idea of what we need SAT wise. Um, ACTs is very similar. You're going to have to be at least over 30 points, ideally 32 points plus. Uh, but most schools, sorry, most students doing Stanford do the SATs. That's why I chose that one today. But again, you need the sports the, and the academics to qualify and references. Get a lot of references uh, from credible uh, people that are respected in the industry. That's going to really help you as well. Hope that helps, guys. We'll be doing more of these to come with different schools uh, to help you guys understand what it takes to get into the schools of your dreams.